Hi, my name is Armi, and I'd like to share my story with you of how I came to know Jesus. Hi, my name is Cam Jones. I'm 22 years old from Boston, Massachusetts, senior at Harvard College, and I want to tell you about how Jesus has changed my life. Growing up, I had a sense that if God existed, I needed to really explore it and then do something about it. In school, in high school, I did attend, we, I went to a, um, a religious school, I did attend chapel every morning, but it didn't really mean much to me. I did not grow up religious, I was not in the church, didn't really think I needed to be. Um, by all worldly standards, which were my own standards, my life was good. I was well off, surrounded by a loving family, close friends. I was excited about my uh, education, my future was full of possibilities. I knew I had nothing to complain about and I didn't think I was lacking anything. I was born with a cleft lip and a cleft palate and so I was very self-conscious of my appearance all growing up and that led to me um, feeling a lot of just kind of unworthiness and unloveliness um, that I kind of just carried with me all the time and my response to that was to try to be as um, try to earn as many friends as possible and try to be as successful as po I possibly could. I got an internship at Deloitte and & Touche and it was there that I met a woman, I'll never forget it. She came to sit in a cubicle with me one day and she said, hey, Gail, have you ever thought about seriously uh, considering giving your life to Jesus and, and serving Him and uh, living as a Christian? I said, you know what, I have, but I just don't know how. And anyway, she talked through the gospel with me one more time and uh, really got a conviction that, yes, God exists. I need to do something about it. And that was emphasized later when I went to church with, with Wendy. Then last year I was, I was studying abroad in Cambridge, England, and a friend had invited me to a Bible study that I went along for, for uh, the free pastries, mostly. Um, I had some concerns with religion in general, with Christianity in particular. I had no plans on converting myself. And they'd given me this, this pamphlet um, that I just tossed on my desk. Um, until one night I was looking through it a little bit and there was a, just a checklist in it. And so I was looking at that and I saw I'd done a couple of the things already. I checked them off and the first one then that I came to that I hadn't checked off said, pray to God, tell him that you believe in him and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over your whole life. There wasn't any thunder, there weren't any visions of angels at the time, but nothing, nothing has been the same ever since. My freshman year of college, um, I, um, I met a group of Christians in my dorm that lived um, on the same floor as me, and I was really struck with how, um, how free they seemed, and they just were, they had this joy that was like nothing I had ever seen, and it was just coming out of this abundance that uh, wasn't about them at all. It was about just like an outpouring of something that was inside them. And I really wanted that. They invited me to their Bible studies. And in those Bible studies, I was introduced to the person of Jesus. And I fell in love. I fell in love with the Jesus that I saw in the scriptures. He was like no person I had ever imagined. I started going to church, got baptized, I started uh, serving in the youth ministry there. I gave my life to Jesus um, my freshman year of college and I haven't looked back and I can say that um, since then God has really healed me of finding my identity in my appearance. He's freed me of kind of the people pleasing leading to um, make people happy in order to find my own value. Those are things that um, I struggle with anymore. A couple of mornings after that, I was writing my journal just about the idea and the experience of, of joy and how it was something that I thought previously that I understood that I could point to times in my life when I'd been, you know, particularly excited, particularly satisfied with where my life was going. Um, but that what it actually is, is knowing the truth personally, knowing that He is good that he loves you, and then just being able to look around and see him everywhere and in everything. The moment that you recognize this, the moment that you accept it, everything changes. And if you don't know Jesus yet and you're watching this, I just want to tell you I'm really excited for you because you're only one prayer away. So what are you waiting for?
What's up, everybody? Pastor Adam Avery here, and I am very glad to wish you a very happy Easter. Wherever you are joining us from, whether you're home with your family or you're maybe socially isolating you know, on your own or with a couple of friends, I'm very glad to tell you the good story that God has raised his son Jesus from the dead. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. In fact, that verse right there, that's what we're going to study today. The, the words of the angelic messenger to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, uh, when they came and they, they were coming to anoint the body of Jesus. So if you have a Bible, you can open it to Matthew chapter 28, verse 6, and there you will find this one verse, the good story summarized in the words of an angel. These words, he is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Pray with me. Father, thank you that Jesus is alive. Thank you for the men and women watching right now. Thank you, God, for all that you are doing in the world. Even though it's a difficult and scary time, Easter Sunday reminds us that because the resurrection happened, anything is possible. So God, would you, through my words in, in this time together, do something amazing. Show us, God, the power of the gospel, the power of the greatest story. I pray these things in the name of the risen Jesus. Amen. I don't know what your traditions are on Easter Sunday. Maybe this is the first time you've actually shown up to anything like church. And, or may, maybe Easter Sunday you know, is, is a regular rhythm for you and you're used to getting dressed in your finest and going to church and then maybe having a nice meal afterwards. Whatever you're used to, I think we can all agree this is probably not it. This is the first time I've ever uh, preached an Easter sermon outside. And it's uh, certainly the first time you've probably ever experienced an Easter gathering uh, in social isolation and in the middle of a global pandemic. But I have great news for you. And it's the same good story that the angelic messenger told those women that Easter Sunday morning. Jesus Christ is not dead. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. So in our time together today, I, I want to take that verse in three parts. And I want to show you how that summary of the good story can change absolutely everything. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Let's think about that, just as he said. What, what was the angel talking about? Well, if you read in the Gospels, you will find Jesus announcing the beginning of his ministry um, in one particular Gospel by pulling out um, Isaiah's scroll and reading a passage where uh, Isaiah prophesies that, that there will come one who will uh, announce justice to those who have been victims, announce freedom for the captives, and he rolls up the scroll and he says, this prophecy has been fulfilled in your hearing. And there we get a little picture of what the angel was talking about. In another gospel, the gospel of John, John thinks that that what Jesus has done is so cosmic, so big, that he actually retells even the creation story in the very beginning of his gospel. He says, in the beginning was the word, identifying Jesus Christ as the very God who made everything. And so when the angel said to the women that day, he's not here, he's risen, just as he said, something amazing must have happened in their minds. Everything that Jesus had talked about, all of those strange allusions to Old Testament passages, those nights that they'd heard him preaching to, to many people or listening in from a distance as he spoke to his uh, closer disciples, suddenly everything made sense that this Jesus is not God's plan B. He's not just somebody who showed up and did a nice thing and so God raised him from the dead. He's not here. He's risen just as he said. Jesus is the fulfillment of all of the hopes of ancient Israel. Now imagine hearing that if you were one of those women that day. They had come to the tomb terribly sad that their friend, the one that they thought was Messiah, was now dead. And so to bring themselves some form of comfort, they, they went to anoint his body and, and show him at least one last honor. And in a moment, because of the news of the resurrection, everything changed. He's not here. He, he's risen, just as he said. It, in hearing that Jesus wasn't there, they realized that he had prophesied this moment from the beginning of his very ministry. Jesus knew who he was. He knows who he is. 
He's not here anymore. And, and that was a key part of his mission, this amazing moment of the resurrection. The good story was prophesied by Jesus and is the fulfillment of all of the hopes of ancient Israel. And so today, as we celebrate this good story, we can have great confidence that our Jesus that we're honoring today is the fulfillment of the hopes of all of the promises of Scripture, just as he said. So let's move to that middle part of that verse. He's not here. He is risen. Now, when Mary and the other Mary came that day to go and anoint the body of Jesus, they were sad because the one they'd hoped was Messiah was now dead. And as one New Testament commentator often puts it, if you were betting on a guy to be Messiah and then he ended up getting crucified, that was an indication that he was not who he said he was. And so upon seeing that that he was not there, I guess immediately they were scared. In fact, the Gospels tell us that they were worried that someone might have even stolen the body of Jesus. But when the angel announced, he's not here, he is risen, suddenly all of their understanding of the mission of Jesus came into sharper focus because the resurrection means that that they were right about the future, but they were wrong. You see, ancient Jewish people believe in a resurrection. They, they believed in it then. But they thought that it was some far off distant thing at the end of days when God would put the world right again. But when the angel announced the good story, he's not here, he's risen. That meant that that promised future had come rushing backwards into the present, that, that God's place of dwelling, heaven, had come rushing downward into that moment. He's not here, he's risen. He's alive. Friends, we don't celebrate a a mythical Messiah. We're not here uh, joyfully singing and and, and celebrating a, a story that's not true. Jesus Christ is alive, embodied. He rose physically. And that means everything can change. Right now, we're in a world that's terrified of death. Our economies are all crumbling and our hopes and maybe our businesses and and our bodies are, are all being shaken. Even our trust in our leaders and government is, is, at a, is at a low ebb. And so it can feel like everything in the world is falling apart and dying. But because he's not here and he is risen, we have hope that this world will rise too. You see, the future is not God just crumbling up the universe and throwing it into the wastebasket of the cosmos. The future is God returning in the presence and power of his Son, and giving us a new resurrected future like Jesus got a resurrected body. The resurrection means everything can change. And that good story was announced that Easter morning by the angel. He's not here. He's risen, just as he said. So that takes us to the first part of that phrase. The good story was first announced with a bit of a bad story, that he's not here. Now, initially, that that scared the women. And they were happy to find out that, that he had been raised. And of course, later in the Gospels, they, they actually see him face to face. But for us today, we, we must acknowledge that Jesus Christ is, is not here right now. Now, the, the good news about that is that he has ascended to the right hand of his Father, and he is ruling and reigning even right now. Some of you, you're scared. Some of you, you're, you're anxious, you're, you're worried. Some of you are really struggling in this moment of COVID-19, and, and I understand. But the good news is that if you trust in Jesus, our risen King is not here. He is ruling and he is reigning, as the scriptures say, until he makes all of God's enemies come into obedience and until he puts the world right again and returns. He's still on the throne, even though the world feels shaken. But the fact that he's not here makes us have to acknowledge that the world that we live in is is not marked fully yet by resurrection. Now, if if you're watching this and you're celebrating Jesus as Lord and Savior and, and you've trusted in him, then you are caught in the moment between what God has started in the resurrection and what he has not yet completed in our resurrection. We live caught between the already and the not quite yet. Jesus has come, but he's not here, but he is coming again. And so we live now with resurrection hope, placing fully our faith in the good story, that he's not here. He's risen. 
just as he said. But for those of you maybe who are watching this and, and you've never really trusted in Jesus or, or maybe because of what's going on in the world, you're right now just starting to come to terms with the possibility that there might be a God and maybe his name is Jesus. I want to point out to you that he, he's not here. And the, and the world that you're experiencing that's marked by disease and difficulty and tragedy, that's, that's because of sin. But the good news is our resurrected king has overcome sin, Satan, death, demons, hell, the grave, and every, every illness. So when he comes again, he will put the world right, but he's not here yet. And his, his absence makes us have to confront a very important question. Are you going to believe this good story? Are, are you going to trust what the angel announced that first Easter Sunday? He's not here. He is risen just as he said. Now, if you belong to King Jesus today, if, if you're here celebrating the story that you have believed, praise God. He's not here. He's risen just as he said. So I want you to renew your hope in the gospel today. I want you to renew your trust in the good story. I want you to get your eyes on Jesus and off the news a little bit. I want you to get your eyes on Jesus and off your difficulty for a moment. I want you to get your eyes on Jesus. And remember, he's not here. He's risen, just as he said. So you can trust him. You can follow him. And you can live in the power of his resurrection now until he returns. Now, if you're watching this and you've not ever really trusted the good story yourself, you've, you've never said yes to Jesus. You've never come out and said, I, I want to follow this resurrected king. I have great news for you. He's not here. He is risen just as he said. And because he has done what he said, because he has conquered death just as he said, and because he has paid the penalty for our sin just as he said, because he's putting the world right again just as he said, you can trust him just as he said. He says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He says, everyone who thirsts, come, come to the waters. Jesus says, unless, unless you be born again, you, you can't see the kingdom of God. But, but if you trust in him, if you believe the good story today, if you trust that he's not here, he's risen, just as he said, then you will rise with him too. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I want to invite you, trust this good news, trust this good story, so that his resurrection will give you your good story too. Father, I thank you for the men and women that have joined in this moment. Lord, for my friends who've trusted Jesus, I pray that this, this moment today, even in the midst of a crazy time in the globe, would renew their hope in the gospel. And Father, I pray right now for the men and women who are hearing my words and they've not yet trusted the good story. Lord, I pray that they would turn from sin. I pray that they would believe the good story, that Jesus is not here. He's risen just as he said. And in turning from sin and trusting that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he has been raised, they would rise with him too. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.